Alright, welcome everybody. We're back with a podcast. This time it's a live one. We're doing a Q&A as well. Alright, welcome everybody. We're back. And uh, hang on, I'm live. gonna have to shut down the Twitch channel as well. Oh, yeah, that's good. Alright, back in action. Uh, yeah, so I'm CB. It's organi- team, a tournament organizer for CB Rivals. Uh, we've just finished the, the whole season. The finals are concluded as well last Sunday and they were fucking amazing, I can tell you that. Um, and I will talk to you about the finals with Corto as well. Corto is a tournament organizer for Core Tournament and we will be working together a lot more in the future as well. Um, we've been talking uh, like tons about the tournament, how to organize it, how to make it even better for all of you. Um, so re- we are really excited uh, doing all of that and we're happy that so many people are interested in it as well. Um, the Discord is exploding for CB Rifles, you can join it. As well, we have over a thousand people there now. Uh, we're doing the weekly podcast, uh, like so much stuff is is growing. Uh, Corto likes to call it entropy. We started simple, but it just evolves into way too many things. Um, so we always try to reduce it to a bit more simple again. Uh, we'll talk about it later. Anyway, um, so what we'll do is we'll talk about the third place final, uh, then talk about the final, which Corto also casted in French with Mr. Nara. Um, and I did all the camera work for the English cast as well. So that was really nice. And then uh, we will see. We might get some questions in the chat, hopefully. I see Elias the Veggie is here as well, team captain from Blame Elias. So welcome Elias, welcome Vero, Vero as well. Uh, great to have you here. Um, let us know if you have any questions. We might even get you on the podcast if you want. Um, so yeah, Corto, what about you? What do you want to say first? Uh, hello everyone, hello everybody. Um, well, you can, we can try to talk about uh, the match one by one. Yeah, I think so. That sounds like a good idea. Yeah. Go ahead, start off. <laughs> um, he then start uh, to show uh, a great control on Resinopolis. Mm-hmm. Uh, because to to attack this map without artillery is not easy. Uh, when the defense is a, is a right place and a good organization, uh, it will be very really strong. So they, they win the attack and uh, this is very, very nice. Mm-hmm. Very good. <laughs> yeah, I agree. But, uh, yeah, so like the, for the first game, it was in Reginopolis, right? The first two games from Reginopolis, like you said, the bands were Falcos and Flamers, right? It's also important to mention, I guess. Um, and like you said, so Ian was on the first attack, and then Blame Elias got the second attack in the, in the second game. But yeah, how did you see that Ian was very much in control on the attack then? Well, what did Eden do that that you feel was really good for them uh, on the attack? Oh, why? Why? Yeah, why? Why, why was it so good for them? Uh, oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't remember all the details of the game. Yeah, yeah, true. true. <laughs> um, uh, but I, I think they they know this map and uh, they know the first match uh, on this map, so. They have experience and they just apply all the experience they have uh, in the past. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I think what is interesting is uh, the, the second uh, map we yeah. see in the semifinal because it's uh, the, the La Grande Gloire mm-hmm. and it's a new map and uh, no team have experience on this team. It's the first time uh, we, sh- we, we, we see this map. Yeah. <clears throat> And uh, this time, Blame Elias uh, uh, show a, a better control and better improvisation mm-hmm. uh, on this map because they have a, a tactic. Uh, I think they, they know before for what, what they want to do, and uh, and the, they win for this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. It it was so interesting, right, to see that Eden was mastering the Reginopolis map, you could say. Like you said, they were really in control, both in the attack and the defense as well. Blame Elias played way more aggressive on Reginopolis, especially on the attack. I, like, those who haven't watched it, you should watch it back on YouTube. It, it's all there on the Sea Rivals YouTube as well. Um, but Blame Elias, in, in their attack on Reginopolis, they moved up on the Sea Castle with all of their players almost. Um, they didn't even destroy the bridge. They went behind. Uh, the little castle on top of the wall and then they just jumped down killed a lot of units and they also brought in their their own units from the front it was such a crazy thing that you probably can only do in 15v15 and not in a regular siege um, yeah so that was pretty crazy and then like I said on the Grande Gloire suddenly Eden didn't seem as controlled or they weren't able to control the game 
and they maybe just played way more aggressive, right? That was that was the difference, I think. They even sallied in the first game, uh, Blame Elias, on the yes. defense. That was that was really fun to watch as well. I yeah. think it's a nice, uh, it's a nice, fun. it's a good strategy on this map. Mm -hmm. you, you can do uh, a sally out, but uh, all the sally out we see, we, we saw, it's um, uh, too early. Mm. I think we, we need to wait one, two minutes uh, to the and no show the the, the, the cavalry mm -hmm. um, and uh, you wait to the attacker uh, attacker uh, start their strategy mm -hmm. start to, to move to yeah, move to, move, yeah, to spread out yes. as well yeah and after you you you, you make a surprise with mm -hmm. the, with the cavalry in the back yeah and uh, with this it's efficacy but it's uh, it's um, useful yeah. but uh, what we see, what we saw, saw um, on this uh, game, or the game, mm -hmm. uh, it's too early. I think for me, yeah. the sellout was too early. Yeah, I get what you're saying. Like, you, you, you can see the calf coming from miles away, you could say. Um, and Blame Elias managed to win a lot of, uh, like, ground in the sally out. They, they were ahead by, I think, 150 or 200 units. So they killed a lot in that sally, and that actually made the difference for them in the end. Uh, allowing them to win the defense. So it, it was good for them, but you could see also in the other final between Polingard and We Are Clowns, we'll talk about it later more, but that, um, um, especially We Are Clowns, they were sallying, but not actually sallying, which was very interesting. Um, yeah, but I get what you're saying. And also I noticed that a lot of teams were spawning on the on the left side when they were attacking, yes. right? So yeah. you can, like you said, you can like not take the calf out right away and maybe Let's switch it out at the supply as a defender at the small uh, monastery, and then yeah. and then Sally. Yeah. The, the first game of uh, or, or where Blame Elias do this, mm -hmm. it's a surprise. Uh, the attackers are not ready, so uh, it's efficient. Yeah. But uh, the the game after we we see the the attacker spot on the left side mm -hmm. and. Uh, they, they can see the cavalry come. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's pretty easy actually to, to see them coming as well. But yeah, <laughs> yeah. So that was that was a really nice game. So after the first two games in Reginopolis, um, Eden was up 2-0, right? And we were all pretty convinced on the on the English cast that uh, they were gonna win the third game as well. Like they they just looked stronger. Blame Elias didn't seem to to have it to to be strong enough. Um, but then they made us two out Eden, so it was almost a re reverse sweep. And then the, the Grasslands final happened as well. Um, how? What did you think about that one? Because that went extremely fast. Like the, it was so. I I have never seen it play out like that. Yeah, I, I know Eden don't like uh, Grassland mm -hmm. and the the conquest map, the, the conquest battle, but the the quest battle. But uh, they don't. For me, I think they don't play at the at the best level. Mm -hmm. uh, at the moment, we we can see they they, they fight and B point, and uh, they have A point and Gosex and uh, mm -hmm. uh, alone yeah. against two 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 Blemelias and uh, I think in the, in the channel, <laughs> yeah, uh, it was say uh, the two French caster. Uh, to go say, uh, help me, guy, guy, where are you? But uh, no one <laughs> reaction, no reaction, and everyone fight on B point, <laughs> and yeah. after they lose B and they lose A, so well, no, no comment. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, you can see it was very different. Like Eden played a lot of infantry, and uh, they mainly has to go to way more cap. But like I said, so the B. Um, was really important. So uh, what happened again? If I remember correctly, like Blame Elias took um, the most far away point from their perspective. I think it was the C point, I'll have to look it back, but I think it was the C point. Let's say it was C. And then uh, Eden tried to get the, the A point, all right? That's on the total other, other opposite side of the map. Uh, but like I said, they, they were fighting constantly like two on two or something on that point, And they, they couldn't really take it on both sides. And then the B point was where a pretty, pretty big fight was. And eventually, Blame Elias got the A point. So they were uh, having two controlling two points, which meant that the final cap was open for them to take. So they could take down the percentages and you need to take down percentages on the grasslands to, to win uh, the game. 
or you have to hold more or you have to control three points because then it also goes down uh, for the percentages. Um, and then Bemelias actually managed to also get the B point and suddenly they were up three points and the percentages were going down and it was all happening in like five minutes or something. It was so quickly. Um, so then Eden tried to get back the C point, uh, but they couldn't take it. And then suddenly the game was over. It was, it was all happening very, very quickly. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, so that was what happened. Um, I also don't know if you noticed, but uh, I fucked up on the stream, actually. Uh, a lot of people have seen it and he'll switch. At least, luckily, there was more people streaming, so they switched the other channels to see the game. Uh, our comments were still going, uh, so it was like a radio show. Uh, but I actually hit the transition button, I transitioned to the wrong uh, screen. So they couldn't see the game on our channel. That was pretty sad. You know, that happens. <laughs> So um, yeah, that's what that was. Um, anyway, so uh, anything else you want to say about the third place final? Uh, about the semi-final? No, no. But I think we say we we talk about all the game, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, it was a nice game. Huh? Uh, yeah. All the team fight very well, mm -hmm. and uh, the I think in general the level increase. So uh, yeah. It's nice. It's okay. Yeah, absolutely no true. Yeah, yeah. I think it, I really enjoyed how um, how both teams were almost equally strong in a way, but they were very different. You could see it. Like the strategy was so different on both sides, and uh, that was really interesting to see. Also, how they played differently on both maps, um, and like Gondaglar, that was such a good map. I think for the final. Yes. Um, all right. Yeah, uh, I think the the map is very nice. Very, we we can make fun. you have a lot of way, mm -hmm. and uh, you can do a lot of strategy. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, it's very good map. Mm -hmm. It's a big map, but yeah. uh, for for final, it's uh, it's nice. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, and I, like it is a big map, but at the same time, it's also relatively small in a way. Yeah, like it's really long, but it's also kind of small in a, in a sense. And that means that um, you cannot like go to one side of the map where the opponent isn't and then you just outrotate quicker and you get a point and then the opponent has to retreat to another defense. You actually are forced on like on the Gloir to fight at multiple places. Like at the B point, you can even fight over the bridge and then you can fight at the final as well. But also on, uh, yeah, like you can fight in so many alleys actually. Um, we saw that most fights evolved around the, like the center of the of the map, so close to the, in between the camp and the and the central street basically. That's where most fights happened for the like for the last ones. Um, but yeah, it was really nice to see. And so so let's just uh, tell you about the finals. So the finals, like between We Are Clowns and Pond Guard, uh, was also bands with uh, Flamers and Falconettis. And the all four games were on like on the Guard. So the, the team captains had got to ban uh, four out of five maps from the capitals capital maps and like on the Guard ended up as the map for them. So they got to play four times on like on the Guard. And um, the score ended in three to one by We Are Clowns. They are now the season winner as well. Um, and I think that was really nice uh, to see them actually finish it on like on the Guard as well. It showed that We Are Clowns were simply better on the day better well better prepared as well um so first game we are clowns won one to zero um then the second game uh it tied up one to one uh pond guard won the attack and the first game we are clowns won the attack second game uh, we are clowns won the attack again we'll talk later about how it happened and the fourth game uh, we all expected uh at least on the english guest i don't know how it was for you quarto but we expected pond guard to win the attack as well because the map seemed to attack attacker favorite right uh, i think it's a, a good example for the strategy of this map mm -hmm. because um, all team uh, do the same strategy uh, on the uh, the two games for the, the two match uh, pongard's choice to uh, to to defend all all b mm -hmm. you know all one all b and uh, they um, they no care about the supply uh, behind b yeah. you know the, on the east of the map yeah and uh, 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 uh 
but uh, clone, we, yeah. we are clone. Do, yeah. do another strategy is the 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 um, uh, they are interesting to defend uh, mm -hmm. to to, def to defend the, the supply. Yeah. And um, I think for me the supply is very important, mm -hmm. and uh, we we can see this on the first game on the first defense the, the first defense of clone. Uh, they can uh, um, contre. Uh, on dit contre. Uh, they can stop yeah. uh, the attack uh, just after the bridge. Mm -hmm. You can destroy. You know, a, and uh, you have a good strategy is to to cancel the um, the building of the bridge. Yeah, you can cancel. It's very easy, and uh, I think it's not uh, it's not fair. But fin, fin, maybe <laughs> the developer yeah, needs to, to stay on this. It was so funny, right? So 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 what happened to for those who have watched it again? And even if you watched it, you can relive the moment because it was it was so funny to see. So um, first of all, we are clowns on the defense, and this was this was extremely interesting. Um, we talked to Temple Shot and Pi, and after the games, and Temple Shot told us that um, the reason they sell it at the start of, of their defense wasn't to kill anything. They simply wanted to make sure uh, Pond Guard couldn't get to the monastery where there were our three culverins. And with those culverins, they destroyed some of the trebuchets. I don't know if you even if you even noticed that or you heard it, but so we are clowns were destroying trebuchets from the start. They used every single resource available on the map. Um, then they pulled back, like you said, and they didn't pull back to the B point, but they even went also back to the far east supply. And they destroyed the bridge again using the cannons. And then when Pondegar tried to rebuild the bridge, they kept destroying, uh, like stopping their heroes. Like they used the culverins, they used numcons even with the bleed and the, the arrows. Um, they used the uh, musket uh, bombs, they used longbow bombs. Uh, they used anything they had to stop them from building the bridge. And it, it bought them like a couple of minutes, like quite a bit of time and also I guess a lot of horses were killed in that event as well. Um, and you could see Pondegar just stacking up five, ten players just to get that bridge built. And it was so funny to watch. Yeah. <laughs> Good strategy is to put the um, uh, Falconetti mm -hmm. on, the, uh, on the supply. Yeah. And you, you you target yeah. the, the point on the bridge and no one can uh, can tag. Exactly, yeah. And this is one of the reasons probably why Falconetti were banned by both uh, for yeah. both matches because they are just, yeah, impossible to deal with if you if you use them like that on the bridge. Um, but even then, so I was surprised. Um, I'm curious how you think about it. I was surprised they didn't go to the left side of the map, for example, because you can actually also go all the way around to, through the left side, go through the camp, and then also go to the to the supply. Like, why do you think pe like teams didn't do it? Um, life size is complicated. I want to be from from for me. Um, life size is nice for the final point. Mm -hmm. uh, it's good to have uh, another way, and uh, because. Uh, one way no one use is uh, to under the bridge. Mm -hmm. You know, after to take B, you can go under the under B yep. and uh, to to attack the final point on the left. And uh, it's another way, another way to to put some pressure. Mm -hmm. And uh, no one uses. Yeah, it's uh, it's not good. Uh, maybe we can do something with this. <laughs> yeah, I'm curious. Like, yeah. So maybe maybe we will see. Uh, we'll definitely have, once we play more on the map, we will definitely see some team try to go to the left flank for sure. Um, but I'm curious, maybe uh, Elias or Temple Show to were in the chat as well uh, can can let us know why they didn't go to the left side of the of the, of the map on the on the guard to to get beyond like the B point. Um, but yeah, it's it's interesting to see that teams approached in this way. They they all had a similar strategy uh, by going to to the far east supply. Yeah, so something else that also happened was they were fighting a lot on the for B and the defender would hold the the B supply that was uh, in between A and B. The bridge would most of the time be destroyed um, and it's it, it's impossible for the attackers to just straight ahead go inside that little uh, a little building. So you have to go around and then you can also it's also easier to use the traps if the attackers go all the way around come in from from the defender side. And you could see that there would always be this face off on the b point that was also really interesting because they would go back and forth bait the traps um try to shoot the ranged and then retreat a little try to get in and get 
Yeah, they kept going in and back. It was really nice. Yes, but uh, I, I I know the the way uh, far the B point on the bridge mm -hmm. is uh, you can have a trebuchet. Yeah. But uh, but to for for the defender uh, to stay on B point on this, it's uh, you have no way f to retreat. Mm -hmm. If you have a, a, a hero to a death hero, he respawn uh, behind the attacker, the attackant. So mm -hmm. you need to make a lot of uh, of way on the on the left on the map to 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 join uh, uh, the, 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 uh, his friend. Yeah. So he, I, I understand to 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 make a, you know a block. Mm -hmm. For defense, and uh, okay, we are 15. We have together. We 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 do a block and uh, we def, but uh, we have no way to to go out. To you have you found you understand? Mm -hmm. it's, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, I, I don't know the name in English, but uh, it's a cutsack. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know how to translate it as well, but yeah, it's, it's okay. You, you can use you can use Google Translate translate if you want, but yeah. Um, yeah, but I get what you're saying. So, like, it's it in a way it's pretty dangerous because if you get killed on the B, like you have the defenders have to be really confident that they win the fight at B because if they die, they will respawn way back. But it also gives you the opportunity to flank again, which is also nice, I guess. Um, but yeah, it's it's interesting. And something that we also saw that um, on B, you it's really hard to get trapped, especially if you destroy a few traps like uh, we are clowns did. And Pondgar did something else as well. After a while, they just were tired of getting hit by all the ranged and the traps and they simply pushed in really hard into the uh in, into we are clowns um so it almost looked like they were attacking the map even though they were defending it um and actually won a few of those fights and those exchanges um on the defense but in the end it wasn't enough of course but it was uh, pretty interesting to see yeah so um maximus but, yeah uh, for, yeah. um, you can see a good defense in the defense on Pongard. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, for, for me, they make a, an error to don't def the supply behind B. Mm -hmm. But uh, the, the first game, the first defense, yeah. uh, I think they don't um, make, they, they don't uh, go, uh, do a good application of what they want. Mm -hmm. yeah, but, uh, on the second defense, on the second game, they make a very good defense. We can see the Senji, the yeah. Grenada Senji, to uh, to stop all the charge. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, we are clone have a very difficulty to mm -hmm. to push and uh, to to advance. Yeah, and yeah, uh, Pongar made a very good defense. On yeah. Top of, on top yeah, defense. yeah, and that is something else that was really interesting about the series is that we are clowns from the start very clearly understood how the map worked. Like every little thing that was available on the map, they were using it, right? The bridges, the Sally, destroying the traps. Um, they were using everything. And Pond Guard seemed to be having a slower start. Their first defense, like you said, wasn't really good. They also said it themselves, like that wasn't good at all. Um, their first attack was good. They, they won, of course, so that's good. <laughs> and then their second defense was way better. And their the last game was just really good, really close again. Um, so you could see that we are clowns who were extremely well prepared. Pine also mentioned after the games that um, Pondgard didn't maybe have the strongest scrim opponents, like or they didn't get to have they didn't be, they, they they weren't forced to think out of the box. Where we are clowns probably had stronger stronger more often strong scrim opponents against like Blame Elias and Eden. Um, so they they had this more creative way of approaching the map and that helped them out a lot. Um, but you could see that Pondgard were getting stronger in the fights. They were winning more fights as the series progressed. Um, so, yeah, it was such, so nice to see. Um, so something that Maximus Meridius is saying in the chat is um, the reason that teams might not go to the left side of the map after capping B is because the right side supply gives the attackers a new spawn point when they cap it, right? And this is true. So once the attackers uh, get the resupply that's on the far north uh, east side, then you also get to respawn there, which is crazy good because then if you die, you can go both directions and you can like do lots of damage there. Um, and the left side of B just gets you smoked by Shenji throws or range from our experience. That's what he's saying. So that's something they learned from the scrims apparently. Um, so I wonder if you can also like go to the left, like you don't have to not 
and get the B supply, but you could maybe try to go all the way around um, and then get the B that way. But again, it might also be really hard because you have to push down on the, uh, on the stairs and there's a lot of alleys where you can hide as a defender again. So who knows, who knows? It's interesting though. There, there's still so many ways you can approach this map, I think. For me, for this map, the most important is uh, the supply uh, uh, on the east uh, behind B. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, is, this supply is very important, very strategic yeah, for, uh, for the clan, So to def is very important. Yeah, yeah, definitely, I agree. And that's also what the the teams clearly agreed about. Like they were all definitely going very hard to get that supply first before they wanted to go to the B point. Um, and the defenders, uh, there was a there was a game where. Bondguard fought really hard. I think it was the, was it the fourth game? It might have been the fourth game. Yeah, I think so. Where we are clowns were defending the second, yeah, their second defense. I think it was. They were like holding for a really long time at the bridge. They Bondguard finally got, got the bridge up again. They were fighting over the supply. Uh, we are clowns actually won that fight, but all of Bondguard respawned at the at at the at the between A and B. Right, and then we are clowns couldn't get back there. Pontcar did a really good fight inside the the B supply building. They killed lots of units, like literally lots of units, and that's how they got the supply. You could see that we are clowns were just backing off. They didn't want to defend B anymore after Pontcar got that supply as well. Um, so you don't even have to get the B supply, I guess, as long as you can draw enough units and players from uh, the other B supply that is closer to A. So. Yeah, that was also nice to see that um, we are clowns were also really in control. Like you said earlier about Eden being in control on Reginopolis, you could tell that we are clowns were really in control on like on the Glor. They knew exactly what their win conditions were and when they were ahead, and that was pretty impressive uh, to see. Yeah, that's interesting because I think it's uh, the first game, mm -hmm. the last game where uh, we are clown are in defense. Mm -hmm. uh, Pongard finally, uh, I think it's what you say, but Pongard wins uh, the supply. They, they want to attack the final point, and so they leave the supply. And when we are clone, come, take the supply, leave the supply, and yeah. Pongard come, and the, the supply change uh, maybe three or four times. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. They, they yeah. kept trying to get it back, and again, and again, again, yeah. again, again. Yeah. Yeah, that was that was good, pretty good, and you could see that teams were they they, all, they were always trying to get a flank going somewhere, right? They were always trying to get something in the back and be annoying. Yeah, yeah, we we need to 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 put some pressure uh, uh, by all the way mm -hmm. and and uh, on the adverse team and to have someone go around, you know, and uh, he's here, he's not here, he's here, he's not here. Yeah. Oh, he's on, on us. <laughs> <It's too late. laughs> yeah, true. Very true. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes it works, and sometimes it didn't. And in the end, it felt like, at least for me, it felt like um, we are clowns were just executing better on killing the guys from Pond Guard that were trying to flank. Um, like I saw SKW getting called out a few times with his cap, trying to get in behind, and it just didn't have the right um, uh, timing. Like we are clowns saw him coming and they killed his calf in the third game i think it was and um yeah stuff like that didn't work as well um ugurai uh, was one of the players from we are clowns that stood out to me um he was always coming in with the calf i think just at the right time um and killed definitely a lot of units there uh is there any player that you noticed was ex playing extremely good in the in the finals uh I don't. Uh, I don't see. I, I'm. I'm look more the the macro, the strategy macro. But I don't uh, look for one player on one move. No. No. I, I can say someone. Uh... <laughs> yeah, just try it. Yeah. No. But yeah, it, it's also really hard, right? Because we don't see what each player is doing in each fight. Like sometimes you can, if it's this very specific unit, like the Kev or the Shenji, you can tell those units apart. But for other units, it's pretty hard to see what unit is doing what. Um, now Uruguay, oh, so we're a question from Wero. Is it Uruguay a PG player? Uh, no, he's actually from uh, We Are Clans, unless I'm totally wrong, but I'm pretty sure he is. Yeah. Um, I think it's a problem. Maybe maybe a problem on the in the game is mm -hmm. uh, the readability. You know, to mm -hmm. to to see uh, if the unit it's a freehand or it's a, um, an adversary. Yeah. What's the name? 
uh, but uh, maybe to to have a, a circle uh, on the floor, mm -hmm. you know, like a, like a MOBA, you have a circle with a cooler yeah. uh, at the at the feet of each unit uh, to see if it's a free or not, and uh, maybe we can see maybe a little more to have to visibility in inside the game. Yeah, that might actually be nice, like where where the player is. Yeah, could be nice. Who knows? Maybe maybe they'll do it one day. Um, you know, maybe. <laughs> I'm trying to see if. Yeah, some question. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Um, I think Uruguay was not wasn't. Uruguay might even be from Blame Alias. Oh damn. Yeah, you think? Yeah, no, he's from Blame Alias. Oh my god. So Uruguay was a player that stood out to me from Blame Alias side. Um, he was really good with the Kefa doing all the flanks, but yeah, I, I agree with what you're saying. It, it, it would be nice to, when you're watching the games, to have a better idea of what player is doing what. You can see the hero uh, class and the name sometimes, but even then it's pretty hard to see what exactly someone is doing. Um, like um, Something that uh, the guys from Pondgard also uh, asked me if, it, if it's possible for like some other final to even like get the player's perspective in or even listen to the voice comms during the game for like for example during the fight because there's this I, I we're probably going to get it on YouTube somewhere or, or Pine might be doing it for Pond Guard. Um, but so PG when they did their attack uh, at some or the defense, I'm not even sure. I think it was the defense. But at some point they charged in and someone shouted for glory and th that is so funny, right? When you see stuff like that happening. So uh, yeah, we just have to get that somewhere. But it, it would be really nice to see, to get a better sense of what a certain players are doing also on certain fights and why it makes a difference. Yeah. So, uh, yep, it's a good one. Yeah, thank you, Wero and uh, Maximus, for telling me that Uguay definitely isn't in either of your teams. He's actually on Blame Elias. Um, he played really good. I even congratulated him today uh, on getting third place. So, yeah, shame on me, I guess. Um, yeah, so something that was really nice to. Uh, standout players in the last game actually for Pondgard vs. We Are Clowns were of course Payan and Temple Shot. They both got the MVP uh, in the final match. And um, yeah, so both being the team captain of course. Oh, Dealer for Life is also team captain for Pondgard. Uh, but Payan is of course the yeah the biggest name on that team. Um, yeah, did you notice that they, they both got the the MVP on, on, on the last map, match? If I hear uh, your uh, your stream, what you say? Ah, so did you notice that uh, Pyan and Temple Shot actually both got the MVP in the last game? No, no, I don't look. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. So that was pretty fun because so the game finished was which was an amazing game, and I, I looked at the standings and then I saw that they were both on top of the of the leaderboard for their for their team, and I was like, wow, these guys like they did all the prep and. At the final game, when it mattered the most, they even played their hard house, killed the most unit, did the best in the team. Well, at least according to the leaderboard. Um, so that's 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 so good, right? It's uh, like this. It's it's almost like the cinematic story where the two like big bosses uh, at at the last second decide to take it up on their own hands and see if they can kill the opponent. It, it's it's so funny. No, I, I like it. Nice. <laughs> It's almost like a, like a movie. We could make a movie out of it, I think. If someone is really good with editing, you can do it. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty good, pretty good. All right, nice. Um, yeah, so uh, if anyone has any questions uh, about the tournament, CB Rivals, um, past season, maybe also next season, uh, how to get into CB Rivals, because we are still uh, getting new teams in. Uh, we are at 20, 20, it's 8, 8, 16 and 6. 22 teams right now which is a lot of nice. teams yeah it's uh, crazy and i know that some more teams are interested in joining so they better hurry up um, because i am definitely not going to do more than three divisions that will be way too much um maybe next maybe next season who knows but definitely not this season um so three divisions of eight will be created if it's seven teams in a third division or six that's also fine we'll still start it um so yeah that's what we'll, we will do uh, Vero, good question about the next season. So, question is, could you explain how the second and third league are going to work, or the second and third division? 
Um, and yes, I can explain you that. And I can even show you something, which I think is pretty cool. Um, so Corto, uh, we've been talking a lot about the, the whole thing with the, like how to do the divisions, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, so um, can you also talk about, because I think that's also really nice, uh, like how you see core tournaments also in the future, like going together with CB Rifles? Oh, well, it's, uh, it's what we say uh, uh, the last time. It's uh, uh, the core tournament. It's a, can to have the, the alternative to the, uh, to the CBL mm -hmm. and uh, to to take the, the best team uh, we can see in the CB rival and the, so in the CB environment yep. and uh, to do uh, um, a competitive tournament on the on the server tournoi. And um, and uh, to to see who is uh, whose team is the best. <laughs> yeah, yeah, basically that's uh, it. Yeah. <laughs> it's a tournament with uh, with eight team, and uh, the particularity is to have the, a double elimination. Mm -hmm. So uh, you can make um, a, a little bit more match uh, than in a it's normal, it's a simple elimination tournament. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, yeah. Voilà. yeah, basically yeah. like that. Yeah, so the best teams from CB Rivals got to play in core tournament, right? In the season after CB Rivals finished, of course. Um, core tournament is most likely going to be played again in season... The last season? No, so the core tournament will be played again in the 12th or 13th season. Uh, the last time. Uh, so you were thinking about do, doing the core tournament in season 12 or 13? Uh, but it's dependent of uh, of CBL ah, because yeah, of course. Yeah. because the CBL uh, uh, are doing the fine in the tournament server, mm -hmm. so uh, it's difficult to have the two events at the same time and in the same season. So I think we can do an alternative. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it will be CBL, and uh, when we have no CBL, I can do the core tournament uh, to an alternative event. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so basically we'll probably have two CBLs a year and also two core tournament, core tournaments a year, right? That's that's the idea, I think. Yes. Yeah. That's the idea. Yeah, exactly. And then the CB Rifles division would be four times a year, basically. So almost every season from Conquest yeah. Blade. Because it's a bit easier because we know all the teams and we can just get it going on the custom lobby and it's relatively easier and more people can get involved or Keep getting involved so yeah that's good all right so about the zebra rifles next season um as you can see on my screen uh zebra rifle season zero finished we are going to start season one uh, i see i have put in season zero but it should be season one um because the last season was the kickstart season and the best teams go to the feudal division and if you notice the feudal and rustic comes from the unit tree those are the two lowest uh, tiers from units you can get so i decided to use them for divisions as well so Feudal is the highest division we currently have, Rustic is the low division we currently have. And then um, because we have also new teams, I decided to create a play-in division. And um, probably next season I will have like a Rustic, Feudal and Chivalric division, I think. Like three from the unit three and maybe even a play-in division. I don't want to, but maybe. Um, and then how it's going to work is as following. The Feudal division will fight for the big championship, right? Uh, the winner of the feudal division is going to be your CB Rifles champions. That's it. The sixth, no, no, no. The seventh and eighth, play, eighth place teams from the feudal division will demote to the rustic division straight away. So you actually want to get in the top six in the feudal division to even stay in that division. Then the teams in the rustic division, they get to fight in order to get to the feudal division. So Numbers one and two will promote at the end of the season to the feudal division straight away. No, nothing else has to be played. Number one and two from the rustic division gets to go to the feudal division. The numbers seven and eight from the rustic divisions will demote to the play in division, which will probably be a, have a different name in the next season. But they get to play a relegation match against the two top teams in the play in division, because. 
I want to make sure that the guys, the teams that get into the Zebra Rivals League are like good teams, serious teams, and that they are committed to like playing the games and get a team together. Because we need to have a stable uh, league system if we want to keep doing this, because it takes a lot of time from us as tournament organizers, but also from all of the players. So we want to have stable and good teams that have fun and also keep getting better at the game. So that's how it's going to work. Um, so relegation matches between the playing division and rustic, rustic division and promotion and demotion between the rustic and feudal division and the number one form from the feudal division is always going to be the champion. So that's how, how the different divisions compare to one another uh, to answer your questions. And like Corto explains, uh, it's going to get even more complicated once we get the core tournament going as well or the CBL because then certain rankings in the, each division could get you to one of those big tournaments. And that's pretty cool. It's also something nice to fight about. Um, yeah, so that's how it's going to work. Anything you want to add, uh, Corto, about it? No, you say the thing. Yeah, <laughs> I, I hope so. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> yeah, so um, that's, that's what it will look like for next season. Um, it's going to be a bit different, though, than last season as well. Um, I can show you the feudal division because those should be confirmed like it's just the, the the eight best teams from last season so it should be we are clowns bond card blame alias eden jacked ultras rose sir slayer and sloughs they are currently all confirmed for the feudal division um and they have a spot reserved for the for, for them if and even if they drop out uh, we'll have to get someone in uh, and what it's going to look like is we are going to have uh, seven rounds basically so we're going to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven rounds. And then it's going to be the end of the season. So there will be no uh, extra finals this season, at least. We might get, get it like in the third season, but not for this season. So this season will be just about the league because we want to see if that works really well because it's more simple and it can also be really excited, exciting. Uh, we could see that like the two pools from last season, even in the regular season, were pretty close. Like, there was a lot of fighting for first place, second place, third place, even the bottom places. They can be very, very exciting until the last round. So we want to give that a go. Um, because if you win the league during the regular season, you pr should probably deserve to, to be the winner. That's it. That, that should, be, should be it. We're pretty confident that the best team will end on top. Um, if teams are tied at the end of the season in points and wins, then we are definitely going to play a tiebreakers match and that will probably only go on the glory unless there is another seasonal map out by then that uh, is also very fun um, so that's how the the division should work next season basically yeah <laughs> nice <laughs> yeah you know, that is nice i think yeah it's pretty good um, and it will start on may 29 it will finish on june 10 right before my holidays and honestly that's why it is that date um, so i hope everybody else also gets their holidays planned around it um, because after the season ends we will have um, a break i'm not sure how long we'll have to figure out when the new season starts for like the conquest blade uh, i do say it like seasonal challenge stuff um yeah so we're going to get that aligned and also depends on when CBL is because uh, we have a bit more information about CBL, but we don't know when it, exactly it will be played. So um, we'll have to wait and see when it's going to go down. And then yes. we, we will plan accordingly, of course. Yeah. Um, another question from Wero, uh, what are the first matches? Um, I understand very much that you want to know all that. Um, but honestly, um, the matches might still change. Um, uh, so I can show you what it is now, but it doesn't make any sense because uh, I might switch the teams around a little bit and um, just just because I can. Um, so I'm not going to show you the matches right now. They will be shown later. What I can show you though, if I do this correctly, is uh, what maps we will be playing on. Uh, let me wait. Wait and see. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, like this go all the way up uh, show full description here we go and show this again oh 
Hang on. Oh, that's scary. Uh, oh yeah, of course, this one. There we go. So I can show you the maps that we're going to play on. And it's going to be round one, May 29, Walford. We started with Walford last season as well, and I just thought it would be fun to have Walford as the border fort. It's also the most played map in the tournaments, right, Corto? Um, so, Walford? Yeah, Walford, yeah. yeah. I, I just feel like Walford is like the map that every single tournament team basically has, should be able to play. Like, if you can't play on Walford, then, I don't know, something's wrong with your team. <laughs> Um, in the next edition, I forbidden this map. <laughs> yeah, true, true. Yep. So, yeah, that's funny. Um, then Kur Castle on June 5. Uh, on June 12, we will have Hidden City. That is a new map for the uh, for the CB Rifles. Um, I'm just trying out different maps as well, because honestly, we don't know how good some maps are for tournament setting, because we don't have artillery, and that makes the maps very different. Round 4 will be played on June 19 on Heilung Fjord. Round 5 is June 26 on Dassault Fort. Round 6 will be on July 3, or 3rd, July 3rd on Sun City. And round 7 will be on July the 10th on Harbor City. And that is what the maps are going to look like. Um, yeah, any maps that you really enjoyed this season or in general, Korto? Uh, me, me, I like, uh, but I, I don't remember all the map of this season but mm. in general i like uh, the fjord mm. fjord i think is a nice map and the la grande gloire i think yeah. is very, very very nice map yeah. big but <laughs> yeah i agree i think Halu fjord is kind of similar to la grande gloire in a way la grande gloire in a way right in how it has because... different ways to approach it yes you have a lot of way and uh, it's not a one axe mm -hmm. uh, you can flank yeah yeah, I definitely agree. I think Hailing Fjord is very interesting. It's also one of those maps that gets played quite a bit in most tournaments. That you know, your tournament, I know we've seen it a lot, and also in CBL. So it's definitely one of the more interesting maps. Um, I actually thought about getting La Grande Gloire for the last round, um, but I didn't want to do it because um, I want to save it for the for like real finals or for tiebreakers. Um, I just don't want to do it. I, I think it's better. So that, that's that's why. Um, and regardless of that, uh, I learned from Corto that I shouldn't always explain why I do things. I should just do it, right? Yes. <laughs> so I'm going to stop explaining things to everybody and I'll just get it done. Yeah. All right. Um, we'll check out if there's any more questions. Master Jam is saying hype. And yes, next season is going to be hype for sure. Um, there's so many new, more new teams joining. There's plenty of players being switched around. Um, uh, I don't know, Corto, if you've noticed in the team registration. I don't know if you even follow that, but there is lots of players from different teams that are starting with new teams or that are switching to other teams. Like, if someone actually keeps track of the like the transfers, um, you can make a pretty 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 big list of players going to different teams. It's it's kind of funny. We we have a French team. So yeah, that's yeah, that's true. Uh, but get mentioned, right? I'm gonna. Oh, Argonaut as well. I think then we might even have two French, two, two French teams. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't see. Let me let me check it out. Uh, I think so. Yeah. Uh, yeah. By the way, let's go over the teams that are joining. Why not? Um, here. So this is the Super Rivals Discord, guys. Uh, if you're not on it yet, go there. You want to be there. Um, you can still register until. Uh, May 14, so you have 10 more days. Um, yeah, so these are all teams that are already in. Uh, Banish is going out, actually. They uh, retreated from the tournament from CB Rifles, so they are giving up their spot, which means that two of the new teams actually get to go to the Rustic Division straight away. Um, and those will be the two teams that registered first, uh, like throughout the past couple of months. Um, Surfslave is already in, Sivo is already in, Odin's Legion already in, Crusaders. Here, Baguette Munchers. I think this is a French house. They should be, I, right? I don't know. Yeah, I think so. I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure. There's there's also the French flag uh, below it. So, I I guess so. Maybe if someone from their team is in, and then then you can let us know. Yeah, Eden is, is also a French. Uh, like Eden has a lot of French players, but it isn't necessarily French, right? 
He then, yes, he then has a lot of French player, but uh, mm -hmm. uh, it's not the language to use in a you know house. Yeah, exactly. It's yeah. An international uh, international house. Yeah, yeah. So it's French in a way, but not exactly. <laughs> um, there's a lot of Turkish team teams joining, by the way. Uh, Gladsheimer, the Turkish caster, um, got so many players ex and teams excited that they, I think there's like five or six of the Turkish uh, uh, teams right now, which is really nice. Um, Two of them will probably uh, one one or two of them will probably make it to the Rustic division because some of the teams dropped out and they were soon to to get in. Uh, yeah, so we have um, YAA Turkish team from EU one. We have Kebabs Turkish team from EU one, um, and they have a lot of players that are well known: uh, Luan Luan Kour, Sexy Kebab, Brave Hakan, Cray. Uh, who else do I recognize? Uh, Luan Luan Kour, Gladsheim. He's one of the streamers. Uguray from Blame Elias actually transferring to kebabs that is that's something i like um argonautis the french team like you mentioned also from eu1 and we have impact esports also with a lot of the, L the llama guys um i'm not sure if they are turkish i don't think so also from eu1 and we have apes for it from the house for captivator with apes our team captain and uh, they're also turkish if i'm correct and um, i believe they also have a house on eu2 so I still have them uh, registered as EU2 uh, team, but I might have to check if that's still correct. Um, and they are probably going to be in. Uh, we have Divinity from EU1. And then we have No Beaches, which is a rebrand of Eden. So Eden will definitely have a different name next season, uh, but they are still in. And yeah, those are all the teams. So your team could be here. So if you want to join again, get it done. Uh, you can join the season. It's going to be really fun. Yeah, so that is uh, most of the teams, or all of the teams actually, aside from the teams that you already know from from the first two divisions. Is there any teams that you recognized or players that you recognized from the teams that are new? We have a lot of new players and a lot of new team. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which is nice. It's yeah. nice. Yeah, it because is. we have a, a match uh, every week. The, the player can do a match every week, mm -hmm. and uh, they, um, they organize they organize to to do some a lot of scrim. So uh, it, it's good for the game. It's good for player. Mm -hmm. it, it's very good. Yeah, I definitely agree. It's it's going to be really good. I think. I hope. Um, I'm pretty confident that it will be. Um, I see that Wero is saying that Adap and Satrazam are also going from clown to kebabs as well. So Kebabs will definitely be a strong team. Yeah, I've also heard about it. Um, yeah, Kebabs is going to most likely start in the play-in stage. Uh, but yeah, they seem pretty confident that they can make it straight to the Rustic Division, uh, maybe even the Fuel Division, if uh, the Fuel Division gets bigger in the season after the next one. So I'm very curious, we'll see. Uh, maybe some other teams can surprise as well. Uh, do you know the French team, Ar Argonautas? Uh, yes, because it's, uh, it's my house. Mm. So, ah, it's your oh. house even. Yes. Interesting. I know. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So tell me about that then. The, you get the honor of introducing the, the team. Oh, if um, I think they, if they do a, um, a good um, a good training and uh, if they work very really to really together, mm -hmm. uh, they can. They they need experience. Mm. It's, it's, uh, it's really thick, but uh, they can do something, and uh, we'll see. Yeah, we'll <laughs> see. I'm very curious now. Okay, Argonautas, I'm going to follow it and see how they do uh, because well, maybe I get to trash talk you this time uh, if if they lose uh, instead of uh, me being trash talk because I'm a triarchy. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Are you going to play with them? Maybe do you think? Are you thinking about it? What? I, do you think you're going to play with them uh, somewhere? No, 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 no. 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 Uh, maybe I can add them on the on the farm. Uh, no, I, I, they, they have all the knowledge uh, about the, um, the map and uh, mm. because we have uh, uh, a lot of uh, old player uh, in, in this house, so we have the, the knowledge. Yeah, uh, it's not a problem. So they just need to practice. Yeah, exactly. That's really important. Like uh, we heard Temple Shield saying it in our last podcast as well, right? Um, how important scrimming is. Um, um, I uh, I named him King of Scrims after the podcast. 
Um, but yeah, he, he emphasized how important the practice is uh, if, if you want to play tournaments and get better. So um, yeah, yeah, to practice and to learn to play together, uh, even the, the hero of the unit, of mm -hmm. the unit, and uh, to to protect the back and yeah. uh, the vision everywhere. But really, to to play together yeah. is the most important and. Uh, Mm -hmm. It's a different game, uh, like we want to, to play in the Siege, so we are just here to fight. Huh? <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, it, it is a whole different game if you play the tournaments compared to the Sieges. Um, every single team, every single week in the podcast, we, we say that somewhere in the conversations that we have, right? Or, yeah, it's it's just a whole different beast altogether, and it is so much fun. I, I've, I'm also seeing that a lot of new players start to join, uh, I think, the game again. Um, partly because of the tournament, because it's it's what people want from this game. I, I hope at least that that, that is what it is. Um, they want to play more tournaments, more games together, because that's what makes this game unique as well. It's it, it's, it's the best reward for us. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's the fun thing about what we do, right? Th organizing the tournaments, we try to organize what we think is the most fun for for the game that we play. For me? Oh yeah, yeah. So it's it's kind of funny that we as tournament organizers we try to organize the the thing that we believe is like the most fun in this game, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We do this because uh, we 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 think for me, I, I think it's the best way uh, for the game mm -hmm. and uh, to to play. We if we want to have fun and the pleasure to play to this game, um, play at fifteen vs fifteen. It's uh, it's um, the the best way. So so the, the game need to the, this uh, this organization, this gameplay, mm -hmm. and uh, the player need to 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 have the access of this mode. Yeah. So it's for this, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I I one hundred percent agree with you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I definitely agree. It's fifteen, fifteen, fifty, fifteen, fifteen is what this game should should always be. Um, yeah. Yeah, right. it's, a, it's a base, it's a hearth of the game. Yeah. It's, it's the most True. important spot in, the, in this game. Exactly, exactly. It's not about anything else, it's just about the, the team play. Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, on that very positive note, I think it's about time we conclude the podcast. Um, I, let's wrap it up. And if there's any questions popping up in the chat, we'll still answer those. Um, thank you for all of those who were in the chat uh, for actually like getting some questions through or helping us with some information, for example, uh, about a player that I thought was in a team, but certainly wasn't in that team. Um, so well done. Um, yeah, so to conclude this podcast, um, thank you all for um, yeah enjoying the past season with us. Um, it's been a blast. Um, I absolutely had so much fun organizing all of it and casting it and everything that goes with it. Um, I'm so happy with all the support that we're getting. Um, make sure to like actually follow all of the uh, casters that are costing all the games uh, they really need it um, we need to hype up this game and tournament even more um, so go to the casters follow their twitch channels um, subscribe if you can donate if you can um, also go to the discord for cb rifle of course go to go to the youtube channel for cb rifles you can rewatch all the games you've still got almost a whole month to catch up with all of the games that are being played um, before we start the next season so plenty of things to watch you can also still enjoy the podcast um, I expect to have another podcast next week we I'm, I'm prob probably going to invite Super Keto Witch who is making a lot of great unit uh, guides and we're going to talk about uh, the units like what crazy units you can play and why they are can be good and how he even like uh, gets to understand why those units are good uh, uh, have you ever seen any videos of him uh, Quarto? Super Keto Witch uh, just uh, thanks to you to organize yeah. this uh, central event for the CB community mm -hmm. and uh, thanks to everyone to support us. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. And uh, yeah, look forward to the core tournament as well, I guess, because that's going to be sooner, hope hopefully rather than later. Um, yeah. So we'll see about it. Um, yeah. So thank you all for watching, listening or whatever you do. Um, also, there's still a Patreon page that you can go to. To support the league um, and if we like get some kind of sponsorship from someone if someone has a business or 
anything, we can even improve uh, on the price support as well. Uh, right now we are dependent on what my games gives us and it's getting better, I gotta say. Um, they are really supporting as well. So let's look forward to the next season. Um, for now, see you until next week. Uh, thank you all for listening and watching it once again. And uh, thank you, Corto, for doing this with me as well. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah, thank you. And bye-bye, guys. <laughs>